1 John chapter 5. Verse 4. 1 John 5 and verse 4. 1 John 5 and verse 4. says for whatsoever is what is what I oh, mean I in church can read it out together with first John 5 and verse 4 one to go for whatsoever is born of God try and read it slowly it will help it sink in amen praise God even in Bible reading try reading slowly Amen. So let's do it again. One, two, go. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hallelujah. So he makes a statement. The Apostle John makes a statement of fact here. He's saying that whatsoever is born of God, what? Overcometh the world overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith now look at verse 5 now it says who is he that what that overcometh the world but he that believeth that what Jesus is the son of God so Listen closely. Your faith in Jesus as the Son of God puts you in a victorious shape and assures us of one state, one fact, which is you will surely overcome the world. So it says, Who is he that overcometh the world? So if you want to know the kind of people that overcome the world, the kind of people that overcome the world are people who have put their faith in Jesus, who have the Son of God, who believe in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Are you listening, everyone? So if your faith is in the Son of God, it puts you in a place where you will surely overcome the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? So this is what we are basically saying, that your faith in the Son of God gives you a kind of life. I, 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 I want to speak on the subject of freedom, but, but I, I'm hopeful that we would be able to completely dissect it within the little time we have. So, amen. So, the kind of, the, there's something that happens when you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It gives you a kind of life. Is the life that Jesus that you receive is the kind of life that you receive that gives you the overcoming edge over the world? Listen to me. There are two kinds of people: those who overcome the world and those who don't. Amen. So a man is positioned, is born in defeat from the day he was born from his mother's womb. He is born in defeat. He, his, his, his defeat is as sure as his birth. Because he's born of, the, of Adam, he does not have the life that puts one over. I'm, sometimes when, when I look at men and men complain about the troubles and sorrows and problems in life, you, the Bible at least God in his infinite wisdom will say that whoever believes in the Jesus or in, believes that Jesus is the son of God is he that overcometh the world you know you know it gives you a, a, an understanding that is either you are overcoming the world or you are not or the world is overcoming you so see see you, you your victory is to the extent of how much of this world you can overcome 
your defeat is as sure as how much of this world is overcoming you. If this world overcomes you, it only speaks of the kind of life you have. If you overcome this world, it only speaks of the kind of life you have. Amen. So as soon as that child is born, his life will only end with a testimonial of whether he overcame the world or the world overcame him. That means for us, when we even came into Christ, there was a statement of fact, a statement of reality in God. Is this world going to overcome you? Or you are over, going to overcome this world. This world has a lot of things inside of it that can overcome you. That can over. Shima kapa lokosia. So do you have? So do you have what it takes to overcome this world? Are you listening to this? Do you have what it takes to overcome this world? In every reality and phase of life, it will be one or the other. The world overcomes you or you overcome this world. Will you lead a family of defeat? Would you lead a family? Would you lead a business? Would you lead a life of defeat? Or would you lead a victorious life? So if he gave us anything, if he gave us anything, he gave us something that can look at what this world has to offer. In all of in all of the enormous attractions of this world and still says that we are capable of overcoming this world. Now, whatever makes a man overcome this world is not a function of what he knows, who he knows, what he does, but a function of who he is. The kind of life you have inside of you will determine if you will overcome this world. So, for real genuine Christians and I use the word genuine Christians real genuine believers you should not have a narrative in your life that says I was defeated you should not have a narrative in your life because whatsoever is born of God does what? overcomes those walls are you now understanding the philosophy behind, the jurisprudence behind the fact that you can live in this world and there is no trend of this world that can turn you, change you? The world can be going left and you go right. The capacity to function like that, where everybody's doing the wrong thing and you are doing the right thing, is inside the kind of life he gave you. Because from the get-go, there was warfare in the, in the picture. The warfare is the one to either sweep you the world's way or the one or you sweeping the world God's way. So Christians that give excuses why they couldn't stop doing this, I can't do, I don't know why I can't stop, maybe one habit or the other, you are lying to yourself. Get it? I'm sorry, it might look so harsh, 
but it's a real truth. I'm, I'm speaking the word of God. You might have a real challenge in your body while you're doing a thing or the other, but the scripture says, is either you are overcoming or they are overcoming you. And if you are born of God, there's one reality, which is I overcome the world. This epistle was written by John the Apostle. And, 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 and 1 John was written before the epistle of John, the, the gospel of John. I hope you know. So you look at John chapter 3. When Nicodemus came and met Jesus and he was asking him about because he started seeing the kind of life that Jesus was displaying. Because John the Apostle is telling us, a man walks this plane, walks the face of the earth, first John chapter 3 and the gospel of John. A man walks this plane, the face of this world. Look at that. And he's doing miracles. And the other man who is an observer of, please John chapter 3, and the man who is an observer of what is going on, He's looking at how he, are you doing these things? Because there are two observers here. It's the one who is creating the headlines and the one who is reading the stories. John chapter 3 and verse 1. Are you following this? The one who is creating the headlines and the one who is reading the headlines. And there was a man of the Pharisees named what? Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Why? For no man can do these miracles. No man can do these things that you do. Because the things that you do are offshoot of the overcoming life. The things that you do. No man can do these things that you do. See, let me, let me clarify something. Do not think that he was just blown away by the miracles. Mm -hmm. And you disqualify yourself that if I can't do a miracle means that um, I'm not as anointed as Jesus. I, I don't have a, an evangelical ministry. I, I'm, I'm not this, I'm not that. And so it means that, well... Those who do miracles are those who really show that they have the abundant life or they have the overcoming life. Mm -hmm. You know, don't disqualify yourself so quick. He says, no man can do these miracles. Let, well, let, let's continue. But he's basically saying, I am seeing a wonder in your life. The things that you do are things above board. We can't do them. I've come to see you. I've come to see myself. You are different from me. You see, to Christians, we say this thing, the, the, the theory of being born again. To Christians, it's I do too. To say that I am different from the man who is walking on the street, I am not the same person. They think that we are all human beings, but we are not all human beings. We're not all human beings walking this place, this, place, this, this, this plane. There is something inside of you that will make a difference if the, the necessity is laid off on you. If, if requirement is required. Are you getting my point? If there is demand made of you, there is something that will make a difference. No, two marriages are the same. I hope you know. If they are born of God in that marriage, I hope you know that they will create a different narrative about marriage. So they always like to subsume us in the same bracket. That we are, because we are in the same class, mean that we are the same people. We're not. You are. Oh my! The, 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 no man is, do the, the, can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And the only way he could bring that explanation was because he has a bit of Jewish understanding. So let's look at it. God did so many things in the Old Testament. It definitely has to be that the God of the Old Testament must be with you for you to be doing all these things. Because how will you place this kind of things that you do? And Jesus was looking at him and he that to, to that moment, nobody had understood that there are two kinds of life. And Jesus had to explain it to him in John chapter 3 and verse 3. And now says, look at verse 3. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, and this is the gospel truth about the abilities that you saw in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of John, the gospel of John, there were only seven miracles that were done in that book. Listen to me, just seven. 
just seven. There were just seven miracles that were done in the whole book of John. It's different from the other books, Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's different. Why? Because those ones that were just given different narratives of different miracles that Jesus did. But John the Apostle, after writing 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, wrote this book. This was the last book he wrote before he died. It wasn't written at the time Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were. Matthew, Mark, Luke were writing. He wrote this one at the end of the day. This is a man that had seen the quality of life. He says, that which we have seen, which we have heard, our hands have handled. Of the things, do you have the scripture there? Have you, do you have the first John 5 and verse 1? Right? First John 1, right? Look at verse, he says, verse, first John, he says, that which was from the beginning, which we have what? Heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness. And what? And show. And show unto you what? That eternal life. How do you see it in our life? How do you handle it in our life? How do you hear it in our life? If it was not embodied in a person. If it's not embodied in a person called Jesus. That which we have seen. Which we have heard. He says, and the life was manifested unto us. It was with shown to you, unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father. Yeah. The life was manifested, and we have what? Seen it. It was what? Manifested, and we have seen it. And we have, and bear witness. And show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was what? Manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with what? Is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write unto you that your joy may be full. So let's go back. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So in John chapter 3 and verse 3, Jesus now says, Verily, verily, I say unto you. And what did he say? That except what? A man be what? Be born again. He cannot see what? The kingdom. No man can do these miracles that you do. Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He's basically saying, except a man be born again, he, he's going to be far and absent from the reality that you see in my life. It is supposed to be said of you, you are a mystery. It is supposed to be said of you, you are a mystery. And someone will say, how do you do these things? And you will be able to tell the person based on the results of the life you get. I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot do these things that you see me do. And then he had to ask that question. Look at that same John. He had to ask that question. And 
Jesus answered, he said, look at verse 4. Now Nicodemus, being curious, now said unto him. <clears throat> because at this time, nobody knew of any concept like being born again. And he says, how can a man be born when he is what? Are you in church? How can a man be born when he is old? Because he was old. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Because, because if you explain the concept of being born again to a man who is a natural born, when you say born again, if not that our world already associate some kind of understanding to the concept of born again. You know, we have used the word so, mon so many times. Our world already has a definition for the word born again. You, you know that. You know, you know, you know, looking back, looking back right now, I think a Christian should not actually open his mouth to say, I'm born again. If you have to tell them that you are born again, you have to open your mouth to tell somebody that you are born again. Well, it's a, it's a different thing maybe if they are telling you, come and join us, do this sin. And say, ha, ah, I'm born again. Well, maybe, maybe that's, fair. that's fair. But I think it's a concept that should come out by action, not by words. I think you explain being born again with actions, not with words. If they have not seen action, <clears throat> they've not seen any action corresponding action based on the kind of life you have, you have to tell someone you're born again. I'm not sure you are. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Because our world abuses people who are born again because we're only born with mouth. But born again, it just starts and ends with the mouth. But anyway, that narrative is changing. It's changing. Because the world is yet to see some kind of people that will walk this earth, this planet. There's some, some mystery that will, un will be unveiled and and unraveled to our world. It will shake the nook and crannies of this world. You are about to be unveiled. Stop looking at me like that. Like born again is a mystery to you. You are the next mystery that they will see and understand that there are two kinds of life. Glory to God. For, for, for us as church, the less of use of the word born again, I think, the better. If you must explain any concept originating from the life of God that you carry, I hope you can do it without saying you're born again. You know, that life informs us, gives us the wisdom by which we operate at every given time. I'm just so excited with this life. This is so good. I hope you have some time to like midnight so we can really we can have a video. Is it okay? No way. We let you go home by 4 a.m. so you go brush your teeth and all that. Okay. Now, so verse, verse, verse 5. And so the man is looking like, are you going to enter the mother's womb and come back again? What, tell me exactly what this concept is about. And Jesus says to him, Jesus answered, verily I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of what? And of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Someone is still thinking about entering his mother's womb and Jesus is still making the subject worse because I do not think that this has answered any or cleared any doubt. But Jesus is giving us something really deep to understand. 
that if men will overcome this world, you can't just be born of your mother's womb alone. No. I came to announce to you that you did not stand a chance, no matter the kind of family you came out from. You see that your son name, there is no salvation in that son name. The Bible says there is no salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven. Amongst men that which, by which we will what? Be saved. Your chances are zero from the beginning. As man is coming forth into this world, zero. It applies even to the big names. <clears throat> to the big names, there is no salvation in any other. <clears throat> no matter how much money your parents have, there is no salvation in any other. That name may open doors for you on earth, but I tell you, it cannot open the everlasting doors. It cannot. It cannot open the key of heads and hell. No, it cannot. Because I tell you of a, of a truth, every man when they approach that door, the names that they bear cannot save them. There's only one name that saves. Is who? Jesus. Now, but this Jesus talking here had not yet died, and he says a man has to be born of the water and of the spirit. He cannot enter verse, give me verse 6. And look at what he says there. Because that which is born of the flesh is at its core and at its best flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is at its core and at its best. What? Spirit. You see this verse? This verse is like a golden verse you can, you should, we should print with, with, you know, words in gold. This is it. That which is born of flesh is flesh. Is flesh. Let me tell you, the day you were born, it was at your core, flesh. You know, Jesus did a very good job with, for us to help us understand that if you are born of flesh, you are flesh. But thank God he now said something else. He says, if you are born of spirit, you are spirit. Because then men will be like, really? There is a giving birth of spirit? Spirit give birth? Yes, they give birth. The spirit gave birth to me. I don't know about you, the way you're looking on shore. A spirit gave birth to me. You see, if a man is not born again and is living inside this building, they will think we are weird. But I'm telling you, <laughs> a spirit gave birth to me. You say, no, you're born of your mom. I know your mom. Okay. I'll tell you that there is a place where we know no man according to the flesh. There's a place where the life of the flesh, there's a door he enters and dies. Then there's a man that comes out after that door. You don't know that man, I tell you. That which is what? Born of the flesh is flesh. Christians, go to God and tell God the limitations they have from the life of the flesh. Meanwhile, God is saying, I hope you know who you are talking to because he is the father of spirit. The father of my spirit. Let me show you John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I hope you are getting anything. John chapter 1. The same gospel of John chapter 1 and verse 1. Are you there? John 1 and 1. Look at this. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And all things were made 
by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Let me help you. Before we go into this, so it says in the beginning, ah, there's, if there's, a, there's so much in verse 1 to 3 that if we start sharing, we'll just we'll close there. It says, in the beginning was the word. That, that coinage word, W-R-D, is the identity you give to God. But God in the spoken form. So, in the beginning was the word... And the word was with God. And the word was God. We have two members of the Godhead in ex, ex, um, um, reviewed in that verse. That is, there is the word and there is God. Oh, come on. I hope you are awake in church today. Is this too load, too much load? I hope you are alive and ready for this. There is the identity of the word and there is the identity of God in that verse. You may have difficulty in understanding how the Godhead interacts. But he helped us. The apostle John says hey, let me tell you something. In the beginning was the person of the word, the word and God. He says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. This is one, this is word, this is God, they are the same thing and yet they will be themselves. Don't worry, don't think about it too much. It will mess up your mind. And the same, give me verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Right? And verse 3 now says all things. All things were made by him. By what? The word. Because I know Genesis chapter 1 says in the beginning, what? God, God created the heavens and the earth. He says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What we use in understanding that Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 is that in the beginning, God, that is word, created because all things were made by him. And without him, so without him was what? Made, that was made. How many of you know the meaning of the word anthropomorphism? Okay, now so why are you smiling at the back? Like Pastor, I started again. You have your Google. Can you just type the word anthropomorphism? What is the use when you say anthropomorphism? Anyone quickly? Anthropomorphism. What? You want to help us? Do you know it? You're not sure. Calm down. Don't be too sure. Anthropomorphism. Give him, give him the mic, please. Is there a mic here? The, the I want so. I, 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 are there folks online too? All right. Anthropomorphism. What does it mean? The the attribution of human characteristics or behavior to a god, animal, or object. Good. Let's take it again. The attribution of what? Human, human characteristics, characteristics to a God. Right? Now, or, or anything. So when you say a God, because a whole God, a deity, sleeps. Sleeping is attributed to human beings. Gods don't sleep. I'll wake you up. When you say a God walked in the midst of the garden, God used legs to walk. 
is an attribute you give human beings. But when you say God walked, ah, how will you say God walks? When you say God laughs, he sings, jumps. You know why they use attributes of human characteristics for a God that is infinite in expression? They use it so that human beings of that same characteristics can relate with the activities of that God. Or else, if God is just doing everything and does not do it in human character, in, do you understand? You will just, you will just, you will be confused. So, the best in expression to explain to you what was going on in Genesis, they were telling you God created the heavens and the earth. They told you, or you, 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 you use human things. When you see that, he did that just for us to understand. I hope you know God is bigger than... <laughs> and how do I describe that? I don't even want to go there. You see, God died. Died. <laughs> how? <laughs> That's another talk. So, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, let's, let's make progress because of time. Look at what. So, in him was life. This is the very first time we're seeing the creator in expression. But now he tells us, now, because we know in him in the beginning was the word and the word was the God. You can't really tell him. And now brings it down. Brings out. Because Jesus will say that before Abraham was, he says before there was a was of Abraham, was, I am. That is, he did not say I was. Before Abraham was, I am, meaning that Jesus would at some point in John 17 was praying, he says, Father, glorify thy son with the glory which you had with him. Or you read Philippians, who says, let this mind be in you, which was also where? Who been in the form of God, right? Made himself of what? No reputation. Can you help me with that verse? That's in Philippians. Um, made himself of no reputation. So he being in the form of God, that's Philippians 2, right? Praise God. Come on, please help me quickly uh, so that I... Let this might be in you, which was also in Christ. Yes. Verse 6. <clears throat> also in Christ. Who being, this Christ, being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God. But what? Look at verse... But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Meaning that before he was made in the likeness of men, he was operating and occupying the identity of the word. Mm. That was his state before he took on flesh. Right. So that person that took on flesh, it says in him, was life and that life that's what, let's go back to verse verse what verse 4 right in him was life and that life was the light of men now you know you might just be want to be in a hurry and think ah that life was the light of men because you need to understand Nicodemus had asked him and said, no man can do these things that you do except God be with him. Right? And Jesus said, and now we see in John 1, it says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. That light will come to that one. Look at verse 5. Now, verse 5 says, and the light, what? Shined where? In darkness 
and the darkness what comprehended it not. The darkness comprehended it not. Look at the next verse. I'll come back to this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Yes, verse 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Verse 8. He was not that light. John was not that light. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Yes. Because that was the word, the true light, which word? Lighted every man that cometh where? says we came to talk about one light. We came to talk about one life. He says in him was life. That life was the light of man. John came to bear witness of that light. That all men through him might believe. That was the true light which lighted where every man that cometh into the world. This is a narrative about light. When does he light every man that cometh into the world? Because if he says that was the true light, because in him was life, is the life that is the light of men. And he says that light lighted every man that cometh into the world. When does it lighten every man that comes into the world? When you came out of your mother's womb, were you lightened? Oh, come on, answer me. Were you lightened? You were not lightened. But that was the true light that lightens every man that cometh into the world. At what point? At what point? Because, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So if every man is lightened by that light, because you know my Bible says that there is a, the, the candle of the, is the candle of the Lord, and it lightens such as every inward part of the belly. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. What do you do with a candle? If you give birth to that child, he's still a born, a born bona fide child of Adam. At his core, he's flesh. And that which is born of flesh is flesh. If he's not lightened by that light, because he says, that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh in the world. Look at verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, pre-incarnate, you state, and the world knew him not. You know why? Why? He says, well, you have your father, the devil. Because of the works of your father, that's what you do. I mean, for what? Give me one reason why you want to kill me. He says, you know why you do not understand my speech? Because you do not have my life. Oh, let's go on. He came into his own and his own received him not. Look at verse, verse. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power power to what? Become the sons of God. Even to them that what? Believe on his name. Who is he that overcometh the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the son of God. What happens to the man when he believes that Jesus is the son of God? He receives the power to become because at that moment, that is where he becomes. Because before that time, he was not. So you cannot overcome this world until you get to that moment of receiving him and becoming the son of God. Then we can start talking about overcoming the world. Then you will understand why Nicodemus will look at him and say, Will a man 
No man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. And he says, hey, calm down. Calm down. Except a man be born of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. See, dominion is a mandate only made for the made man. Is a mandate only for the man in Christ. Dominion is only a mandate a man in Christ can exhibit. Now listen to these Christians. Christians, listen to this. Because we've been doing an exposition about the life and the light of God. If you are not walking by the light inside of you, you are under darkness. If you do not allow that life determine your reality today, you are still under darkness. Because if you, before you became the son of God, were under darkness, if you were, had no chance of overcoming the world, if you were a believer, from the father's name, your mother's name, and all the inheritance that left of you, gave you no chance of survival, of rising above the water. What makes you think, without using the life of God inside of you, that he has given you, that he paid the price for you to have. You think you stand a chance of anything victorious in this life. You do not. You do not. You cannot rewrite the story. Whatever will make you stand, whatever will make you victorious, and this is the victory that overcomes the world. In our faith in the Lord Jesus. Listen, every component of you if you are doing well in your academics and it has no trace with the life of God inside of you, you are only using mental energy of the natural man to defeat natural men. It has no relativity with the testimonials that can bring, give God the glory. Should I say it again? Should I say it again? If you, by your intelligence can run a business but there is no offshoot of the life of God in the mechanics of how you are running a business that can give you a place where you can say the, the greater one inside of me puts me over you know what you are only walking by the energy of the natural man you cannot if you meet if the day water will pass Gary you will then realize that you have been walking all the while by the energy of the natural man there is no other name under heaven by which man can be saved. Safety for a believer born of God must be to the end of ensuring that everything in his life is conquered by the life, is, is affected by the life. Because no Nicodemus will walk up to you and say, no man can do these things. Because you know what? They have seen it done by their brother in Harvard. They have seen it done by the one that graduated in UI. They have seen it done by, but let me tell you, there will be nothing that can, are you following me? There's nothing that overcomes the world. Because all you are, the best of you, is still natural expression. What am I saying? The day a Christian starts allowing God to live through him, expressing the demands of God for his life, expressing the will of God for his life, the purposes of God for his life, that is the day he begins to put the life to work. God did not send us here to do only the things natural people can do. Nothing there gives God any glory. Nothing there gives God any glory. I went to school. That which is born of the flesh can go to school. I got married. That which is born of the flesh give birth to children. I, I, do, do you understand? Mention any... I, see, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm happy like this is this. I know of a truth. There is a lot of persons in the body of Christ that have not begun using the life of God inside of them. We are so many. If you check our competitive advantages, they are natural speakings. Go check the things that, I mean, whatever affects them, affects us. Whatever they do, we do. Whatever, do you understand? And where will, the Bible says, the earnest Christian 
they, wait, they are waiting the manifestations of sons of God. Meaning that creation is waiting for people who are born of the Spirit. Born of a different seed. People who will allow the seed of God put them over. That is when you start overcoming the world, that is when the world is drawn to your light. You know why we spend so much time praying? We know we spend so much time doing all of the things we do. And let me tell you, as a church, we have an obligation under heaven to drive you to the place where you start using the illumination of the life inside of you. If you're disappointed, you see, that's why when we say, we say, a person says, I'm confused. You are confused because there is some part of you that only wants to remain natural and there's another part of you saying that you are more than this. And then the person is tossed toward God. You see, when we say do not walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit because there is a part of you that says, no, I want to do it like this. And there's a part of you that says you're bigger than this. And God, you will always, the Bible says, for the here, as long as he's a child, he differed nothing, nothing. Let's close with that scripture, Galatians 4 and this one. For the here, as long as he's a child, are you there? Amen. Now I say that the here, as long as he is what? A child. He differed nothing from what? From a servant, from a slave. Because every one of them that have, are still under sin and the flesh and are born of flesh have no chance of overcoming they are all but slaves. They are people that can see Jesus walking. That, see, they are the ones when he was saying in John chapter 1 and verse 4, and the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended in us. People look at that verse and just look at light, darkness. He's talking about people because the Bible says, and gross darkness, what? The people. When you talk about darkness, we are talking about people. The people that wanted to stone Jesus were operating from their core. Which was darkness. Because John the Baptist, that's why it says, of all men born of women, there's none that's risen greater than John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist, of all men, was the only one that could look at Jesus and say, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh the sins of the world. You cannot say that statement if you don't know something. Because you, he, he saw, oh my God, I am not worthy to lose his largest of his shoes. You know why he said that? Because he was wondering, do you know what is walking the earth? Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? All his disciples were looking at him. He said, if you know him, you will walk with him. That's why his disciples left him and went to him because behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world and when he does that this one ah, if you know who this one is he that will make us brand new inside this is the one that will take us our stony heart and give us a heart of flesh this is the one that will give us the illumination inside this is the one that will make us sons of God this is the one that we can say, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we be called sons of God. This is the one that can give us the, the overcoming life. This is the one by which, because John the Baptist, in the best of his doctrine, was telling me, You soldiers, stop, stop beating people and collecting money. You don't do this again. You don't do this again. But you know what? He looked at it. The best of his doctrine was only telling people, You stop fornicating. You stop doing this. But he was looking at it. See, if you know this guy that you are looking at, if you believe on him, who is he that believes? Do you know, if you follow this guy, let me tell you what will happen. I, you will need no man from outside to be telling you, soldiers don't collect what, more than your wages. You don't do that. From inside, 
There will be a propelling life that has given you illumination that makes you walk amongst men in the love code. You will express life according to the way God expresses life. For as the Father had life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. And so will the Son give to anyone. That's why he says, for as many as received him, became, because he came to his own. His own, in the midst of their darkness, could not recognize him, could not comprehend him, could not accept him. They wanted to even kill him, and they eventually killed him. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. that God wants to do that I do. My heart is indicting the things from above, not the things of beneath. Because my life is from above. Because he that is from above is a forward, is above all. No sickness can take me down. It comes from beneath. Do you understand? When they talk about the things that make people go down, the overcoming life is in me. I, no matter how much situation I am, if I dwell long enough in the life I have, it will put me over. They say something is wrong with you. What is wrong with you? Spend time in the life you have. I tell you, some people appear confused. Pastor, I don't need this. How do I do this? You are not tapping in the life you have. That's why you have so many questions. If you, if you will spend time in the life you have, you, your questions will be reduced by half. Because I've been illuminated by the life of God. Glory to God. There is no mystery in this world I am not bigger than. Because who is he that overcomes this world? Is he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Because by my believing in Jesus, it affects the, the inside person. And that inside person affects everything. Hallelujah. Are you getting the point? Someone tells you, the doctor tells you that you are going to, you have three more months to, to live. Ah, ah. You do not know where I come from. You don't know where I come from. Three months to live, I will show you that I am not from this realm. I'm not from this realm. I am not from this realm. Let me tell you why we must harp on these things. You know the word of the Lord that told us from the beginning of the year that the way we will rule is by paying more attention to who we are. Right? By who, paying attention to who we are. That's why you notice that we go around the same circles until we are done. Until you get it on it. Until it, it hits you like a thunderbolt. It, we, we will not stop. Because the thing that puts you over is the life. Glory to God. Glory to God. So no matter the bad news around you, calm down. No matter what they are peddling around you, calm down. The greater one puts me over. He puts me over. I have the life of God inside of me. I will, I will go spend time inside. And, and that man, the man inside will grow stronger and stronger and break all the chains, all the bands, all the... That's what happens. We grow and we rise by revelation. We, we increase by illumination. Do you understand that? The things that are holding you down only needs the revelation, revelatory aspect of you. The darkness will give way only by light. But you don't need to force it. Pay attention to the life. It will come out. They say you are always scared. You don't know who you are yet. Pay attention. You are broke. Pay attention. People do not know that eventually economic issues is a result of sin. But the first thing that the Son of Man came when he was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. He took out sin and gave us a life that is victorious. We are emerging guys, we are emerging. We are emerging. 
And I pray for you, you will, you will stop living and craving to only dwell and make your mastery natural. I pray for you, you will start enjoying supernatural mastery. I pray for you that your appetite and your desire to express the mind, the will, the wisdom, the grace, the glory, and the life of God will be only the thing that runs through your mind day in, day out. I pray for you that the things that have been always assaulting you, the things that have always been, 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 been showing you pepper, the things that have, been, that have been annoying you, you will be so angry from inside that you will have enough grace and temerity to stay in the place you should stay that will bring you to a place of victory. I pray you will not run from your battles. I pray you will not, you will not cower in fear and, and cowardice. I pray, I pray for you, you will be angry from your inside and only want to express the life of God. The life of God. We will manifest it in this flesh. The Bible says he was the only begotten of the son, but now are we the sons of God. I am joined to that number. The world may not hear me, yes, because they don't have the life I have. But I am going to be one that will turn this world upside down. Because I know failure is taken out of the equation. Someone tells you you will fail. I cannot fail. Listen, I cannot fail. I'm not making an empty bragging. It's a true statement of fact. I cannot fail. The Son of God that gave me life did not fail. I don't know how I would break that mystery of not failing, but listen, I will go pay attention to the life I have. Stop allowing your limitations limit you. What is it that is limiting you? Come on, folks. Come on, lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost.